I'm about to do a quick tour through Germany and the UK with the artist Emlyn, and I want to share with you how I would prepare for something like that. And hey, if you're not a touring musician, don't worry, there's still something in this video for you. No matter what kind of gig you're doing, this stuff all applies. Well, except maybe packing. So sit tight and let's do this. So I want to show you a little bit of my own workflow strategy that I do for most gigs that I'm on. In this case, I'm the music director on the gig, but even if you're not, this will definitely help you in your preparation time. This also kind of throws it back to AP study days. I don't know if any of you are in school watching this video, but I used to kind of figure out when the test was and then plot back about a week or two, depending on how hard the material was and create a plan of attack for how I was going to learn it. So right now I'm seven days away from rehearsal and I made a chart and there's about 15 16 songs depending on how you slice them so that's about two to three songs a day and then you know we get through that we'll be sitting pretty the good news is we're playing basically the same set we did last time so most of it should be review let me give you a shot of what my own cheat sheet or arrangement sheet or note sheet whatever you want to call it looks like right here so I have Emlyn set should probably be more specific. This is our EU set. And here I have a column for all the songs in the set order. I like to do this in a spreadsheet because, you know, things change and it's nice to be able to be like, oh, this is this song now. I like to put all the tempos in there just so that way when I go back and program all these things, it's pretty easy. I'm not constantly looking up or running BPM meter or something on songs. Then I have the key signature, the length of the song, the live tempo so so everything column wise from pretty much like this length live tempo live key that's if we have any changes we don't in this set but a lot of times when you play songs you'll end up speeding them up live this is also an md thing for me i made notes of when i finished the arrangements programmed is a good column to have i like it because it helps me remember okay which songs have i programmed all my sounds for i've done it for all of these but like i said i do really need to get my pedal board in order because i'm changing a few things so I am gonna have to reprogram everything and most of that will probably be just changing the combination of buttons hopefully it'll be quick I don't know finally reviewed so I've actually reviewed three of the songs so far so we're, we're good on the schedule but I have a little extra time right now which is amazing so I'm gonna go ahead and learn a few because like I said Wednesday's shot I'm not gonna be able to work on any songs and some days I'm really tired another thing I actually really like to do as of late is I learn the songs first and then I go back and just program them all I used to kind of learn the song and then program it and then learn the next song and program it and I don't know that might be more efficient just lately I, I like playing the guitar unplugged and just really learning the parts and then getting all the sounds right I'm gonna actually be reconfiguring my pedal board today to get it ready for a tour. So the first thing I'm trying to accomplish here is see if I can actually move some of the cables going into the RGM without totally eradicating everything that I've done here. So I'm thinking I'll be able to move the inputs around over here a little bit because I did leave a little bit of slack on the cables and hopefully that'll take care of it. Ultimately, I was able to move some of the cables around, but as you can see, I did have to cut a few of the zip ties. It seemed like the cables were generally staying in place though, so hopefully it'll hold up for the week. It's only three shows, so fingers crossed. Also, if you want to see the full why for why I'm changing the pedal order, be sure to check out this video here. The results were very surprising to me, so I think it's worth a listen after this video. So I just went through and I reprogrammed all my sounds now that my pedals are in a new order on my board. I'm looking to integrate my Bender Fuzz a lot more than I was using this JHS Mini Foot Fuzz, mainly because that one's not broken. <laughs> <laughs> this one's not totally broken, but the knobs don't move anymore. I'm sure that's something that could be easily fixed, but I'm excited to hear it because I think this fuzz not only serves the music better, but it's actually truer to the record sounds. <laughs>
How's it sound? Is it alright? Decent? Unclear. <laughs> Rehearsal schedule was pretty quick this time around. We only had three days. Day one, the band comes in early with the engineer to get it all set up and run through as many songs as we can before the artist comes in the afternoon. Second day, we fine tune where we were at with the arrangements and focused on a few trouble spots. Also making sure all the different elements in the tracks were loud enough to translate the way Emlyn wanted in the room. And the final day of rehearsal, we just ran the set a few more times and just tightened everything up to make sure we were all feeling comfortable. All right, I'm gonna put a new set of strings on my Telecast before I head out. I was kind of debate whether this is the right time to do it because I think the strings likely have them snapping under pressure in the airplane, especially if you forget to detention them. It's probably higher, but I like changing strings in the comfort of my own home. Now on to packing. This is in some ways the most stressful part of the gig because it's really easy to forget something important like, I don't know, a passport like I did on the last tour. Anyway, it's a seven day journey so I'm bringing eight pairs of socks, eight pairs of underwear, hopefully that's enough, a pair of pajamas, nine shirts, and specifically some long sleeves because it's going to be cold. Definitely want to fold these nicely otherwise you're going to get mad wrinkles. One pair of jeans since I'll wear my other pair of pants on the plane usually a more comfortable pair. One comfy sweater that I will also wear on the plane and definitely need my black denim jacket for the shows. Now for my backpack, I've got this handy power outlet adapter that's got multiple options built into it. I've got my MacBook and my USB port so I can actually plug things into it. Oh, and a book that I brought on the last three gigs and have not read, maybe one day. I've got my MacBook charger in case, bracelets my wife made for the tour team, my noise canceling headphones. By the way, those are definitely worth the money on these long plane rides, so look into it. A phone charger. Definitely don't want to forget my in-ears. An instrument cable. Then my power cable for the pedal board with two patch cables I used to get from the output of the ACS-1 to a DI. An external hard drive so it can transfer the session easily to the B computer and get a copy of the session for the end of tour. In my guitar case, I've got a bunch of strings in case I break one or feel the need to change them on the run. Uh, then I have to detune my guitar before it hits the plane. It's supposed to help with the tension on the neck in the air. This is a tip I've learned from all the times I've Instagram that the TSA ripped apart my pedal board. A bunch of you told me to write a note about what it is and then they'll leave it alone. I doubted it, but the last few times I've done it, I haven't gotten the TSA notice that they've been through your case, so I guess it's working. Here's my note. I just pack it away neatly on top. Give mama a kiss. Give mama a kiss. Yeah. And that's a wrap on this video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like before you click off, a comment, subscribe to the channel, and I will catch you next time.